I teach addictions with individuals, families, and society. And in Portugal, they take about half the course blended before they arrive. This affords us the opportunity to use class time to go out and do field visits, where we meet with SICAD, which is the government entity in charge of the decriminalization legislation. We meet with individuals who were a part of that organization when they were trying to lobby to pass that legislation. We meet with individuals at that organization who are in charge of the Persuasion Commission, which is the entity that meets with individuals who are charged with the possession of a controlled substance in, in some degree. Um, and we meet with the people who organize and, and mandate that legislation from a government perspective now. We then go over to the European Monitoring Center with Drug and Alcohol Addiction, which is an entity of the EU. And they are in charge of informing all countries in the EU on best practices in regards to prevention, policies, interventions. I, I teach a course called um, Prevention in Schools and Communities. And so really that course is, um, talks about prevention from, from stopping drug and alcohol use to begin with, but also harm reduction techniques. So how do we, uh, if people are going to use, how do we prevent other things like HIV, hepatitis, and those kinds of things that are associated with, with some drug use policies. So typically students go in, we have these conversations about um, how they're opposed to harm reduction policies and needle exchange programs and things of this nature and why would we think that encourages things. And so that's sort of the, the mentality of our students going into this course. And then we take a, a field trip and the program that we visit there is called In Moraria. Um, that becomes a really powerful visit because we go to the neighborhood, we walk through, we meet with the officials there, they, they explain to us, they let students touch and hold drug paraphernalia, they often see drug use on the way to the place. So it's a, it's a really sort of visceral experience for many. And then they have us meet with um, former users. Uh, our students don't know that at the time. Um, and they explain, they, they provide the presentation and then they tell their personal story about how they were users and how they, how they received help over there. So that's one of the most powerful things that we do um, while we're there. In the Persuasion Commissions, when people are, are caught with a charge of a possession of a substance, are still optional. They, they invite them to come three different times. If they don't show up all three different times to their appointment with the Persuasion Commission, then they're provided with a fine. And if they don't pay the fine because they're unable to, then they don't have to because they don't want people going out and committing crimes just to get money to pay the fine. So fines are waived for people who can't afford to pay the fine. And treatment is not mandated because they don't want to waste treatment dollars on individuals who aren't interested in not using. Um, it's only offered as a, an option for people. If they think that someone really needs treatment, they'll give them something called uh, presentations where they have to go to present themselves to a treatment program 25 times on 25 different days. But when they get there, all they have to do is sign a book that they came and that's it. The intent is now you know where it is, now you know the person who works there, you've developed a relationship. So the, the fact that neighborhoods throughout Portugal have said, it's already here, we want to help, we want to support, it is really um, speaks to sort of the, the mentality and the culture um, that's been established there, which we're far from establishing here. And our students have to write reaction papers, and by the time they're done with the, these series of courses there, they're like, wow. I think about this differently, I, 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 you know, and that's the goal, so. For the most recent reports, it shows that Portuguese youth rates are one of the lowest in all of Europe. It looks like about 6%, this is marijuana use specifically, it looks mm -hmm. like about 6% of youth, but when you compare that to Italy, which is about 22% of youth, or Denmark, which is about 19% of youth, Germany, which is about 15%, it's substantially lower than, than the majority. I think it looks like only Romania and Greece have, have lower rates than Portugal. When I teach the same course here in the United States, students are required to go to an NA or AA meeting so they can experience that process and write a reflection of, of what that meant for them and how they perceived that to be effective or not in, in helping someone sustain their recovery. So when I inquired, uh, with the individuals who work with the treatment programs about this uh, and with the SICAD organization and the Persuasion Commission. They said that only about 10% of the people who get caught with the possession and brought before the Persuasion Commission are identified as someone who has a substance use disorder. Um, and the definition of recovery 
is different and it's not required that you become abstinent and never use again but rather that your use becomes something that is not negatively affecting your life and the life of others so i was a i was a, a believer in this approach um from a cognitive perspective right because i because i read the literature and i know what's happening but in the same way that the students are believers, now now I'm a believer because I've, I've been there, I've seen it, and I've seen it work firsthand. So you can read all the journal articles you want, but until you, you sort of experience it firsthand and talk to um, you know, former users about their experiences and the way they were treated with, with dignity, that that is really impactful. I get a, a really deep sense of satisfaction from being able to bring students over there who frequently aren't even receptive to a harm reduction model, let alone redefining recovery to be something that an individual can define for themselves uh, and, and being able to get behind the process of decriminalization. To, to grow the number of individuals who are in the field treating those who suffer from addiction, to be able to embrace this perspective and these policies is so gratifying.